This is an introduction of the Blue Eddy AC300 menu. Here you have the home page, and the most obvious icon is here, which shows your battery charge level. If you click that, you can actually see exactly how many batteries you have connected and each battery's state of charge. In this example, we have three batteries connected and one which isn't. You can also click each battery's icon to view the individual state of charge, battery online status, and battery state. Back at the home screen, you can click here to see the DC input voltage and power from both DC1 and DC2. And here you can see the AC or grid input voltage, power, and the AC input frequency. By clicking this icon, you can see the AC output or load, including output voltage, power, frequency, and the state. Back at the home page, we'll click DC load, and there you can see the total DC output power as well as individual output powers. DC off or on can be clicked to change whether the DC output is turned on or off at the time. And similarly, you can click this button to turn AC output on or off. That covers everything on the home page. Next, let's take a look at the settings. There are a lot of settings on the AC300, but the first one should be pretty obvious. There you can change the language between English or Japanese. The next option is AC output voltage. We have it set to 100, which is the standard in Japan and other countries. But in the United States, we typically want to choose 120 volts. That is the standard voltage for power in the US. The AC output frequency can be switched between 60 and 50 hertz. Again, the United States uses 60 hertz, but in fact, most countries use 50 hertz. Next, we have the input source for both DC1 and DC2. If you're using solar panels, you want these to be set to PV. If you're using any other sort of DC input, such as a lead acid battery, you would want it set to others. Let's go to the next screen. Here you can see the buzzer setting. That controls whether you will receive a buzzer alarm uh, in the event that there is some sort of an alarm on your AC300. The buzzer setting controls whether you will receive a buzzer when there's an alarm on your AC300. The eco setting, of course, can be switched on or off to determine whether you want to conserve power, but maybe you don't care and you leave eco mode off. Machine type only really needs to be changed in the event that you're using two AC300 modules. Everyone else should keep it on single phase split phase only if you're using two AC300 units. Now, let's talk for a little bit about the working mode. There are a lot of settings inside this button. Click. The first you'll see is standard UPS. Now, if you want to use standard UPS mode, this works similarly to what most of you imagine for a UPS. In this mode, the AC300 always supply power through the grid if it's available and will only supply power via the battery if there's a loss of grid power. If you care about timing for the UPS, you can enable time control UPS mode. There, you can change both time setting and parameter setting. Here, you can choose when to allow charging of your batteries. 
And here, you can change when to allow discharging of your batteries. Perhaps you only want to charge when the AC power from the grid is a lower cost, and you don't want it to charge when the AC power is in high demand and your power company might charge you more for that power. And you might only want to discharge during those times when the AC cost is high. That way you can use your battery to save money. If you click parameter setting, you get a lot of information, but the easiest way to think about this is that the battery SOC low is the minimum amount of battery that you want to hold in reserve for emergency power outages. So in this case, it's set to 10%, but maybe you want to keep 30% battery at all times. This way, if there's an emergency loss of power, you always know that your AC300 is holding 30% of its battery to power all of your devices in that emergency. Battery SOC high, you can think of more like maximum grid charging. This number shows you how high you want your AC300 to charge using both the grid and your solar panels. You can think of battery SOC low as emergency battery reserve. If you set this to 30%, if battery level reaches that status, the AC300 will only power your devices using utility power unless there's an emergency loss of utility power. Battery SOC high, you can think of as maximum recharge or maximum grid charge. If you set this to 80%, then the AC300 will use both utility power and solar power to reach 80% battery capacity. After that point, it will only use solar panels. The next choice is PV Priority UPS. This works the same as SOC High. It just controls the amount of power you want to charge using both solar panels and the grid, after which point the AC300 will continue to charge using only solar panels. Finally, we have Customized UPS. This is something of a master control for all of the other UPS settings. If you have grid charge disabled or time control disabled, this overrules all of the other settings in time setting or SOC setting. So if you want to use those settings, please be sure to enable them here. After that, you can set your time or parameter as we showed you before. The last option on this screen is max grid input current, which is set to 15 amps. If you need to change that setting, please contact customer support. They can provide the information you need because this can actually be damaging to your cables or your devices. On this screen, you have PV Parallel Enable, which you can set on or off. This setting is actually important if you're drawing too much current from your solar panels. If you have more current than can be supported, some of that solar power will be wasted. So if you're drawing more solar power than can be supported by one circuit, you need to be sure to set this to on. Then the AC300 will divide the power between two circuits and allow you to get the maximum amount of solar power that you're receiving. The Bluetooth setting should be kind of obvious. If you want to use the Blue Eddy app on your phone to control the AC300, you need to have this set on. But if you don't, you can turn it off. With the Wi-Fi on, 
and the AC300 connected to your local wireless network, you can use the Blue Eddy app to control your AC300 anywhere that you have a Wi-Fi connection. Here you have the touch sound, which you can turn on or off. If it's on, when you push the buttons, you will get a click. If it's off, you won't. The backlight setting controls how bright you want the screen. The sleep time setting controls how long the screen stays on. You can choose 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, or if you choose never, the screen will stay on whether you're using it or not. Finally, we've got the date and time settings, and then you can hit back or simply click here to go back to the home screen. Here, you can choose product info, where you can see your model number, your unit's unique serial number, and various hardware and software version numbers. If you click inverter and charger info, you have four icons. These correspond to pictures which you can see on our website. Click here on battery information and you get the same information that you can view from the home screen. By clicking each battery, you can see all of the information available. And the final button on this screen is alarm history. Here you can see a history of all the alarms your AC300 has provided to you, including the time and error code information. You can click there to clear all of those alarms. The last icon is the alarm button. There you can see any current alarms being shown to you by the AC300. As you can see, we don't have any, but if you do and you want to clear them, just click there. Back at the home page, and that's the menu of the AC300 from Blue Eddy. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll subscribe by clicking the button, leaving us a comment, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Mm -hmm.